everybody, Jennifer from Scrapping Under the Influence. I am back with another project. So this is actually going to be a companion to another project that, depending on when I post this and when I post it, this may come first, it may come second. I'm not sure which yet. <laughs> but this is can be done as a standalone project. So the Cricut file for the base for this is linked below. But what you have here is a snow globe shaker. And I've matted this using the Christmas cheer that is the exclusive paper to Country Craft Creations. This will stand up like this. We've got our cute candy cane pattern on the back. This flips down. We've got a photo spot here, and of course that's open on the side. And then this opens up out this way. On this side, we have just some little flips and a tag pocket. So this comes up and then out. And then this just flips like so. We've got a little tiny tag pocket, and these are the cut aparts from the six, the eight by eight collection. So this whole project was done with the eight by eight collection. I think I used one of each sheet, so you get twenty four sheets, three each of eight designs. I used one of each, um, and of course, all of these little pieces and parts are well, not that you can see are loose so you can tuck pictures back behind those. And this is going to tie like so. And on this side, I'm not sure why I untied that because I could take it out. I have a little box pocket on this side. And again, the rest of the cut aparts from the cut apart sheet. And then on this side, we've got just a little matchbook flip. And I did only mat one side on these so that you have space for pictures, but you've got lots of space for pictures in there. And then this just ties closed, like so, and slips back into that little pocket. And this flips up like so, this closes here. And there are some little, little magnets hidden down in here, so this will stay closed. And this will stand up so you can display it like that. Of course, we've got our shaker in here. We've got some jewels from that, the new jewel assortments that she's got. So I did just go all the way around with kind of the green iridescent on there. And then on my little border strip that is also from the cut apart sheet, I did go over those with um, Nouveau Crystal Glaze. So they, they're dimensional and they're shiny. So... The tutorial starts now. Okay, so when you go into the file and design space, you're gonna have four pieces that are brown. Those are the ones you're gonna cut out a lightweight chipboard. You're gonna have these red pieces. There are six total. Those are the cardstock to cover the chipboard. These two light gray pieces are slightly smaller than your brown and red. Those are your two acetate pieces for these two, for the, the window for the front. These last four that are the pink, the dark red, and then the two greens, those are for your pattern paper to mat over your red solid cardstock. Okay, so I have cut everything. As you can see, this is not really like super big. So I've got my solid card stock oops, to mat with. So I'm gonna set that aside for now. I've got my, well, let me get those two pieces out of here. I've got my, crying out loud, acetate pieces. Those are just extra that cut out of the middle of our shaker matting. Here's one of my chipboard, my other chipboard, these two, and then we're gonna manually cut these from your scraps, and then there's my four to mat my cardstock. So this stuff, I'm gonna set all this to the side. As you can see, I've kinda of got this tape together so you can kind of see before we put it together how this is gonna go. This is gonna come in like so. This is gonna come up over the top. We are gonna use two small magnets in here, and my tape is off because I've got my score tape on the back of this so it doesn't want to stick to my purple tape anymore. Okay, 
So let me get all of this purple tape off. So from your scraps on your um, lightweight chipboard, you're going to cut one piece that is one and one eighth by six and a quarter and one that is one inch by four inch. So let's set those aside. I have gotten score tape on the back of that one. I need to get it on the back of this other one. So I thought I was going to be like all prepared and whatnot and put that and then tape it all back together, except that it didn't want to stay taped once it had its backing, which makes perfect sense, actually. <laughs> I did get that slightly crooked on there, but it's not going to matter. And that is one inch score tape, which is also available in the shop at Country Craft Creations. I think I just ordered some more because that is the last step of my roll. <laughs> okay, hold on one second. Let me grab my scoreboard. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Actually, that's not going to work, is it? It is not. Okay. Well, actually, it, for part of this it is. Bear with me. Sorry. I had this all figured out last night, and then it got too late, and I was tired, so I went to bed. All right. So to not totally wrap, but mostly wrap these two pieces of chipboard for the one inch by four inch we need a piece that is three by six so I am going to use my one inch spacers and I'm going to put that one down and then for the other one this is one and one eighth by six and a quarter. This is three and one eighth by eight and one quarter. And the reason, even though this is technically a spine piece for the most part, the reason it's not wider like it normally would be is because of where it has to go. Um, we don't have a whole lot of space, so you can't do that as wide as you typically would for um, a spine piece. So I am going to fold and burnish. And this bone folder is not one of them that's in the store, but Tammy just got some new ones in the store. There are four different versions. Um, bone folder version number one is the closest to this one. If you are in the market for a Teflon bone folder. I love the Teflon ones because when you burnish the paper, they don't make it shiny. So if I use like a normal bone folder and I do this, it can make your paper shiny. I really should like do a demonstration of that. Maybe when I, maybe at some point I will do that because that has, was not one of those things. I mean, I noticed it, but I was figured you really couldn't do much about it. And then I had gone to a like a one day crop with a friend and I'd forgotten my bone folder. And she gave me her Teflon one to use for the day. And I was like, oh my gosh, this doesn't make my paper shiny. And she's like, oh yeah, they're amazing. So I won't use anything else for the burnishing of the paper like that. Which, I mean, granted, with this kind of project, for the most part, you're going to end up matting over it, but still. All right, so I'm going to cut out the um, squares in the corners, and then I'm going to miter ever so slightly, just like we always do. Being careful because this is lightweight chipboard, it's really easy to get too far over in mitering and actually cut the chipboard. Okay. And miter and miter. Okay, do our other piece. Okay. 
here again. I don't usually cut this out with the tiny scissors. I'm just doing this to make sure that I have a little better control so I don't accidentally cut my chipboard. Normally I use my purple ones over there, but. And I got those new Teflon coated non-stick ones that Tammy has on the website. And I opened them and I played with them once and then I promptly lost them. I still had not found them. I know I hung them up with my scissors. I think they might have fallen off of my pegboard and down behind the desk and I just haven't, or down behind something, I just haven't found them again yet. <laughs> okay, so we're going to see if we can use our fine tip without it, without fighting with it too much today. We'll see how long this lasts. Feel free to place bets because my bet is it's not going to be long. Okay, so I'm putting a little bit of glue in there and then just folding up and over. Although if I'm good about putting my pen back in, we might make it longer. You're crying out loud. If I could grab a hold of the pen, that would help, wouldn't it? Okay, so there's one. Here's our other. All right. So, to assemble this, we're going to start our two solid pieces and we do need two of our red pieces because we need to cover these and yes you're going to have a raw chipboard edge you can ink this you can paint the chipboard before you put this down um, you can leave it as is because it's lightweight cardstock it's not like super noticeable for now I'm going to leave it I may maybe I'm not making any promises I might um, uh, run some thin twine around the outside of this. I don't know yet. If I do, I'll do it on camera so you guys can see how to do it, especially when it's something thin like this, because it is a little bit trickier, but it absolutely can be done. So I am gluing this and I am burnishing this really well so that I don't have glue lines, which aren't a real huge concern if you're using the artisan cardstock. But if you're using something other than artisan, which honestly, why would you? <laughs> Just kidding. I know not everybody uses artisan. All of, everybody has their, their preference. Even if I was not on the design team for Country Craft Creations, this would still be my preference. That's literally how good this cardstock is. Okay. And burnish this one down. Okay. So the four inch by one inch spine is the one that's going on top of this. Oh, wait a second. Okay, yes, that's how we're going to do this. We want to... I'm going to grab a pencil. We're going to measure in one quarter of an inch from the side. Okay? So because I have my Tim Holtz ruler, I can put it, and it's clear, I can line up this first line with the metal side on the outside here against the outside edge here, and I can just draw a very light line. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other one, but on the opposite side so that they face each other. Okay. This, you're going to fold this all the way over. 
it's going to line up where you go almost to that top and it's going to be a little bit off the bottom. Okay. Now, here's where this is going to get a tiny bit messy. So, you have your pat your your matting. This needs to essentially go underneath your matting. Okay? What we can do, you can either mat this and then part of your spine will just sit on top. We can trim this. So I would line this up where it needs to go. And I'm just going to hold it there and I'm going to repeat with lining up and then drawing my line. Okay, that's how I'm going to do this. Like I said, you could put this down and then put this down on top of it and it will be fine. I am actually going to trim this, not, not cut it. I am going to trim. I'm going to go down that line. And, but I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom because when we put this down, it's going to go just like a 30 second of an, actually we can cut that whole thing. Let's do this. Let's do this the slightly easier way. Okay. And this is the one I'm going to put on this side. I think do I want that one. Yep, I think I want this one. Okay. So I'm going to line this one up where it's going to go. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. Oops, I'm going to turn the ruler the right way because that would be helpful. Okay. I'm going to draw a line. Okay. This actually, not that I can see my line on there. Well, if I hold it, I can actually, weirdly enough, it runs right along that line. Okay, so what I'm going to do, sorry, I didn't think to bury my trimmer over here on this other side. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to line up where my line is, and I'm going to cut right down that line. Okay, I'm going to set this one aside. I'm going to go ahead and glue this one on because when we glue this one on, if it's expected 16th of an inch border, it's going to line up right where we need to put that spine. So that's actually going to help us line up where our spine needs to go. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Like I said, weirdly enough, that lines up like right on that line of the paper. Okay, and again, we're going to set this one up here. Okay, and this one's going to sit down right here. Sorry, it's been a while I've had to, I've done a shaped one where it's recessed like that. Um, So now I'm going to fold this all the way over. I'm going to get glue on this tab. And keeping it folded, I'm going to bring it in. It's going to go to the top up here not all the way to the bottom down there, and I'm going to put that down. 
and I'm going to burnish. Okay. I'm then going to bring it this direction, fold it in again, get my glue. and do the exact same thing. Open it up. The two little tabby pieces, I don't know what you call them, the little feet of our shaker, our snow globe that is, are gonna overlap when you open this. Just like that. Okay, now, this piece and this piece. So, this piece, we are going to fold this up and in. So rather than try to leave like some kind of gap, because we don't need much of a gap because, again, this is lightweight chipboard. So we're going to attach these two together. This will fold up to close the album, but our shaker is going to be built on the outside on the top. So we don't need to leave space on this inside piece. We need it, It's going to go on the outside just to make it easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this piece. Actually, yes, sorry. Think for a second. You're going to center this up. You're only going to have about a sixteenth of an inch that's going to hang out on each side. We're going to fold this up and over and you want to make sure that this bottom here is lined up. So and now I'm sure anybody who's actually following along and making this is understanding why I typically don't do tutorials on shaped albums. Okay. I'm going to hold these two together and I'm actually just going to kind of push up and burnish this so I can kind of get just that little tiny bit of a gap that I need. Okay. So since this is all lined up where I want it, everything is good. Now is when I'm going to come in with my glue and don't get it in those upper two corners because we are going to have to manually trim part of this off. Okay, so again, I'm just burnishing this down. Okay, and then opening it back up, and it, you see we've got our little, it's about a, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Not even that, it's about a thirty-second of an inch. No, it's about a sixteenth of an inch gap, which is all we need because, again, it's lightweight chipboard. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on this side. I want this lined up where I need it to go. So I'm lining up because these two pieces will fit together exactly. So I'm lining this up here and then I'm bringing it down and you can use your bone folder, so I need to be able to see it, to make sure that those two pieces are lined up. We can use our scoreboard to make sure that they're lined up on that edge. In fact, that's probably going to be our easiest way to do this. So. So let me actually okay. start to make sure so that when we glue this, it's going to close up like this. So, yeah, I am doing this right. So I need to get my right one in there. Okay, so this side is flush, this side is flush. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to line it up. We're going to fold this over, okay, line them up on top of each other so that 
that bottom edge is where it needs to be. Okay, and then I'm gonna move this. Whatever method works for you to get this lined up, keeping in mind it's gonna be a little bit funky because of that hinge. So maybe we do it this way. There we go, that'll work. Okay, so I'm gonna line this up. So that our bottom is aligned all the way across. Oh, you know what, that works. Okay, there's where, okay, easier. Line these sides up, up there. You're aligning this bottom, this side right here, because that part is gonna line up exactly. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. And then we're gonna glue. Over, face down, and burnish that down. And then we can come in with our scissors and trim just very carefully where that comes up. And if you can get it in there closer with a craft knife, by all means do it that way. Just be careful you don't cut your chipboard while you're doing it. Because I can actually get in there a little bit better with the craft knife than with the scissors. The reason I don't have the spine piece like this as part of the Cricut file is because Actually, I don't know why I didn't do it that way, but that's okay. Okay, so flip this over. Again, I'm gonna just get that with the craft knife on that edge where it overlaps. Okay, and open it up and get my last little corner that needs adjusted. Okay, so. Assuming everything has lined up as intended, this should all line up like so to close. So now we need our small magnets, which I guess I need to open another one. So I don't use the small ones nearly as often. In fact, I think I'm actually going to use... Sorry, bear with me. I have some other ones that I got on Amazon maybe? Actually not sure where I got these from. But they're really strong and they're a little bit smaller. Okay. I don't know if I can get them apart. Haha, <laughs> this is why I don't usually do these because I have to fight with them. There we go. Okay, so there's two sets. I'm gonna stick those back in our drawer over here. Actually, I'm not gonna stick them back in the drawer. Yes, I am, because I don't want to get close to something they shouldn't get close to. And if they're in the drawer, then I know they're not where they're gonna ruin anything. Okay. So these are like even thinner than. Although then now I'm worried 
Well, I'm going to use my other ones. So that just makes me worry that they're going to be too strong. They're going to tear the paper. And I don't want that to happen either. So we're going to go back to plan A. And I will just edit all that magnet nonsense out. Okay, so we have our small magnets. We get two sets. Maybe. Okay. So though these are going to go, because they're too wide to go up on the top, they're going to go down on this bottom part. So let me get the backing off of one. And we're going to put it down about right there. Because we want it far enough in that when we put the paper down over it, it's not going to cause it to bubble up too much. Okay, so then let's get the backing off of this and off of this. And just so I have something kind of holding this up where I want this to actually sit when they're closed. I'm gonna stick that roll of tape in there. I'm gonna line this up, make sure everything's lined up exactly, and then pinch. And then there's my magnets. Okay, so now we can go ahead and put our other mat down on here and here, like so. And I forgot to put the pen in my glue, so how much you wanna bet it's clogged? Maybe, maybe not, maybe we'll get lucky today. And I'm not gonna have to pull the fine tip off of my glue like I usually do. That's why I haven't been using it for months now, is because I got tired of fighting with it. Okay. All right. There's that. And then here is this one. Okay, so we can cover these up. We can go ahead and put this one on. Actually, no, we can't. We need to do our acetate. So I'll grab my, ugh, maybe, my scraps from when I cut out my other matting. I had an idea of what I was going to try to get on that little center piece there. So let's let's play with this for a second. Why not? I'm actually going to cover that whole thing. I am actually going to go one inch. And I didn't cut enough off of the side. I'm trying to get part of Santa on that little. And then this is not. Nope, that's not going to work. Okay, no big deal. We're just going to pick another piece here worth a try. Okay, so there's my matting for that piece.
twice. So I am going to flip this over this way. We can go ahead wherever I put my mats and mat the front and back. Oh no, we can't. Sorry, not that piece yet. This piece and this piece. I know I'm See, I'm telling you, I'm losing my mind. Okay, so we're gonna mat these. And just for the record, I actually sized this thing way down. This thing was like 11 inches wide and like eight inches high, it was huge. And then I thought about it and I was like, no, <laughs> that's too big. That is going to be an absolute nightmare to try to build. Well, I don't know. Maybe not. It might have been okay. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, mm, no, I don't think I want to do it that way. So, okay. Which really, I should have left the magnets off on this part until I did this, but that's okay. It will be fine. Okay, so we're going to put this one down here. our overlap there so we can bring this one to the top and get this one put down Now I'm going to flip this around and we're going to get our acetate on the back of this one. So let me set that there. Let me grab my sticky dots. I found my big one. <laughs> This is the one I was trying to do with the fall banner to do my bit shaker, and I could not for the life of me figure out what I did with these. Literally, they were sitting on the table next to me underneath something that I did not move. So, there you go. All right. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna figure out which side has my backer paper. So I'm not even going to pull this all the way off because I don't need to. So your sticky part is down here. This is your backer piece. Okay. So I'm going to lay this on here. I'm going to fold this up and then I'm going to burnish on my cardstock. Okay. Fold this back again. And the leftover dots will stay right where they need to. And then I'm going to very carefully peel this off. Okay. You can see all of those little sticky dots on there. We are going to be able to put this on here in one shot. And like completely like super easy. Double check, however, and I don't know that you can see this 
if you're using those, you'll see I've got a few of them that are just kind of where the dot itself was like partially on the cardstock and partially off the cardstock. So I'm just running my finger around and getting those kind of pushed over. Okay, so this, I'll show you on the other red, is slightly smaller than your red cardstock. So what we're going to do is you're going to kind of eyeball it side to side, but you're going to do it flush or almost flush with the bottom and then just lay it down and press it down. And there is your acetate. That is going to go on the outside I'm sorry, not on the outside, on the inside here. Okay. Now, we want to stick this down. I can do glue, but if the glue runs and it gets on my acetate, I can clean it. You can actually get it off with rubbing alcohol and you won't see it. But I can also flip this over. Line this up so that it's very top edge, because I can bend it back. And I can lay this side down. Do the same thing again. I can burnish this down, and I can get that sticky grid. There's sticky dots. Not sticky grid, that's something totally different. All over my chipboard. Again, I'm just going to very gently peel this up and off. Let my backer sheet fall back over. Again, just run your finger around. And I can take my piece with my acetate. And I can line it up on here. Except I don't know. I think I missed them on this very top. The very top must have landed right where my big piece was, and that's okay. And down it goes, except I'm slightly crooked. Oh no! Fortunately, because again, it's acetate, I can very easily, quickly, if it sits for too long, it's going to cure, and then you're not going to be able to move it. There we go. We'll start at the bottom. There we go. Now it's lined up perfectly. I'm just going to burnish that down, and our back side of our shaker is good to go, and there we go. And so that's going to close up like so. So it will sit up like this and be a cute little display piece at the same time. So we're going to do the same thing again. This time I'm going to double check where I have the sticky grid left. And this time I'm going to do it opposite. I'm going to do my chipboard piece first. And I'm actually going to come in here from the side. Because that's the thing, is you're going to have lots of this left over and depending on what kind of die cut or whatnot that you're working with you can just kind of move it around and pick up the dots in other places because if you get the dots like layered up on top of each other it's not going to matter so I can see on this one I need some up here so I literally can just come over here push this down it back up and it will pick up any of these extra dots from another area of the paper. And honestly, I didn't realize for the longest time that Tamara actually carried these, both the small ones and the little ones. I had gotten the small ones somewhere else, I don't remember where. But I'd gotten them for card making, for, you know, doing little tiny die cuts and lettering and, you know, that kind of thing, like sentiments on cards. 
And I was at her house in the warehouse and was like, hey, wait a second. You have those sticky dots. And she's like, well, yeah. I'm like, I didn't realize they came in the big sheets. I'm like, I need those for shakers because it does make life so much easier. <laughs> okay. So for this one, because I'm getting to where I'm going to have, especially with the cardstock, I don't want to try to, you know, bounce the cardstock around on there. Chipboard's going to be a little bit sturdier, a little bit more forgiving than cardstock. I'm going to go to my other end this time. And again, we're going to do the same thing again. We're just going to lay this down on here, fold this over, and then just burnish. That's going to pick up all the little dots. I'm going to this off again. And I can see I ran into my space that doesn't have anything at the top. for the glass craft mat. That's all I got to say. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to put this one down on top of here. After I run my finger on my edges to make sure I don't have any of them that are hanging out over the sides. And I'm mostly worried about in the middle section, not so much on the sides. And I'm going to start at the bottom. Get this lined up. And down it goes. And how much easier is that than messing with the score tape? Seriously. Way, way easier. All right, so. And of course, I've left the pin out of the glue again. Yeah, there it goes, clogging up on me. Oh no, it was on the pen. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, so now we need to build our shaker. So I am going to turn this around. I'm going to lay that over here. I did see something somewhere. I don't know how true this is. This has not been the case in my experience, but again, that could just be me. I am going to go ahead and use some rubbing alcohol on the inside of my acetate on the inside of my shaker. The reason for this is supposedly this helps cut down on um, static. I don't know how true that is. But we're going to try and we're going to cross our fingers. So I am going to grab out of my stash my quarter inch foam tape. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to grab my strips. So, and I'm going to drop stuff in the process because, of course. Okay. So I am going to grab my strips. These are an eighth of an inch. They are available in the store at Country Craft Creations. And I am going to go right in the middle. And I'm going to just lay that down. I can tell you I sincerely hope that they come out with a roll of these that is this narrow because that would be amazing. So if anybody from Scrapbook Adhesives happens to see this, we want eighth of an inch score tape on a roll. <laughs> okay, we are only going to do one layer 
because the shaker fill that I'm going to use is fairly flat. So we don't need to get too crazy with what we're putting in here. Okay. I'm going to cut this off this corner and then fill in that little bitty piece right there. All right. So, let me grab my shaker stuff. Find it. I had a new one. It was really cute for Christmas. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay. So this one, I believe, is still available in the store. Hold on one second. Let me find my shaker stuff. There it is. Okay, so this one is available in the store. It's called Yuletide Fun, and we've got little trees and little Santa hats and little stockings. And they're really thin, so we don't have to make our shaker like super huge. Okay, so I am going to put some of these in here. shirt. Okay, so there's that. And then I think I want something shiny in here with it. Out of the corner there. And these are like some sort of weird like polymer clay type thing. I don't know, they're really cool. Um, I'm sorry, bear with me just one second here. Okay, maybe I don't have enough. Okay, 
I don't have the other one I thought I had. So I am just going to use some of these little clear kind of iridescent pearls from Michaels with my cute colorful clay slices. So, all right. Now we need to just get our backing off of our foam tape. Get off the little tiny piece there, that will be good. So I am going to line this up on the top here. And I'm going to press this down. I am actually going to go down around this with my bone folder just to make sure it's good and adhered. And there is our shaker. Now, I am not cutting pattern paper for the front of this, okay? I love when they all decide to just congregate at the bottom, despite the fact that you've got it set good and burnished down so it shouldn't, but that's okay. All right, so there is our completed base. I'm going to get my stuff together for our little inside elements. There's not a ton. Honestly, this is the most difficult part of this entire project. I'll just tell you that right now. Um, the rest of this is going to be super easy. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to start with our left side. We're going to start with a pocket that is 6 and 5 eighths by 4. Starting with 6 and 5 eighths at the top, you're going to score it half an inch and 3 quarters of an inch. Turn, half an inch again, 3 quarters of an inch again. Turn half, three quarters. This is going to be, I don't know if it actually has a name, a box pocket. Okay. So we are going to miter from, you've got your two score lines here. Okay. You want to miter from the outside score line. Okay. Like so. I didn't even get all the way to the line, so I'm gonna fix that. Okay. On this bottom, you've got the score lines intersecting. You're gonna cut across on the inside set, and again on the outside set. You're gonna miter ever so slightly just to that outside line right there. Down here, we're going to cut all the way up the outside line. And then we're going to miter on the inside line. So you're going to have this little tab. Okay. We'll do this. Oops. Same thing on the opposite side. So then we can hang on to the paper. So all the way in and then miter. All the way in, all the way up, and then later. Okay. So I'm going to fold my inside first, fold it back, and then fold and burnish my outside. Inside. Burnish, fold it back, outside, burnish. Okay, you may need to slightly miter these two little tabs. You're just going to have to check that after you get everything kind of folded up here. Okay. I can 
tell by the way those fit. I do need to miter this just a tiny bit. Okay. All right. So let's grab our folio. This is going to go on, really, it could go either side. I'm going to put it on the left side. So I am going to fold this bottom part flat. So my little tabs are hanging out here. I just have this bottom tab. I'm going to put glue on that tab only. I am going to center this up. And it's going to help to fold those pieces completely in. This is going to go all the way to the bottom on this side, and it's going to go to this outside edge. This corner is going to be on this outside edge. Okay? Or not. <laughs> oh my god, seriously. There are days that I just question what I'm thinking every time I sit down and do a tutorial. Now at this point it might seem like it's up too high. It's going to be fine because it's going to get popped out. Okay, so I'm going to fold that little tab in. You can try and glue that if you want to. It's honestly, I think it's too hard to try and glue. I'm going to turn this around facing me. I'm going to get the glue on these two tabs. I'm going to fold this over. And then I'm going to use my bone folder to get down in here and push those down. Okay, so you should have a nice little box pocket. If that's what they're calling, that's what I'm calling it, so that's what we're going to go with. And this is where I need, I want my other style of bone folder just because it's thinner. So I can reach down in here and burnish those side pieces down really well. Okay. So inside that pocket, we're going to do a little matchbook album. So we're going to start with a piece that is 4 by 8 and 7 eighths. We're going to score this. Sorry, I have to think for a second. At 4 and 1 eighth, 4 and 3 eighths, so the line on either side of the quarter inch mark. I think I did this wrong. I did do this wrong. Okay, let me recut that because that's not right. Four inches wide is correct. All right, so inside our pocket, we're going to have a little matchbook album. So we're going to start with one piece that is four by nine and one eighth. We're going to score this at four and one eighth. 
four and three eighths, eight and three eighths, eight and a half. Okay. Just gonna fold and burnish. Fold and burnish. And there's our little matchbox cover. Except I still think I have the score wrong. I do. Let's try this again. All right, so inside the pocket, we're gonna have a little matchbook album. So you need a piece that is four inches by nine and a quarter. We're gonna score it four and one eighth, four and three eighths, eight and a half, eight and five eighths. Okay, I'll set that one aside. Our inserts, right now I have Four. I'm not positive we're going to use all of these, but we're going to see how it goes. We're just going to start with extra. These are four, that's wrong, four by four and a half. You're going to score these at half an inch on each of them. That was something else that I cut down. If you do see that right where it says four and three quarters, it's not. It's four and a half. That was when I cut for something else and then just apparently didn't erase. <laughs> That's okay. All right, so we're going to take our cover. We're going to fold and burnish. Okay, so there's our flap. There's our bottom. And that, because it's that eighth inch, those are really always kind of, kind of funky to fold. You just have to kind of roll it back and then roll it back forward again, and then you'll get your, your little spot, okay? So these, I'm gonna fold and burnish these, I'm gonna stack them together, and then see how the fit is inside our little matchbook. Okay. We're going to do this like we did that photo wallet. I've done a couple other things that I've done like this. But we are going to stack these together and glue them, and then they're going to go down in here. And that's actually going to be about perfect. So we are going to stay with four. What I'm going to do, stacking them together so that the fold, so they're all lined up. I'm going to come in here with my glue. No, I'm not outside yet. And then I'm gonna pinch them together, making sure they're still stacked up. Pinch them together, 
until that glue dries. It'll only take a second. Okay, then we'll put our glue on the back tab. And that's going to go down in here at the top so that this is going to fold down over it. This will fit in here flush side to side. You're going to have a tiny bit of a gap at the bottom, but not much. And then rather than normally we would kind of adhere that so that this would be like, you know, you would bend this and tuck it in. We're actually going to take some ribbon as soon as I find it <laughs> and we're going to wrap it around this and it will just tie in the front. And then this will sit right down in here like so. Okay, let me grab our elements for our other side and I'll be right back. Okay, so for the right side, we're gonna start with a very small pocket. So this is five by two and a half. We're gonna start with the five inch at the top, score half an inch, turn, whoops, half an inch, stay on the half an inch, turn half an inch. We have a flap that is four and three quarters by four. With a three quarters inch at the top, we're going to score half an inch and three quarters. And then I have a flap that's going to attach to that, so this is four and a half by four, and we're going to score half an inch. Okay. Then we're going to have a very small waterfall. So I have three pieces that are four by four and a half. You're going to score with the four and a half at the top at half an inch. Okay. So let's start with our pocket. So we are going to miter through where our score lines intersect. We're going to miter at the top. Okay. I'm going to fold and burnish. And fold and burnish. This is going to go centered up at the bottom, but I don't want to put that down yet. I want to start with the flap that is four and three quarters by four that has the two score lines. So I'm going to fold and burnish, turn this upside down. I'm going to fold this flat so that our gusset is folded flat. And I'm actually going to miter these ever so slightly, even though the first page of the waterfall will go on top of this tab. We're going to miter it anyway. Okay. This is going to go all the way up so that the top corners, and we may not be doing more than like one page on this waterfall at this point, are going to go all the way to the top so that they are flush with the outside edge here. Okay. This flap, again, I'm going to miter my corners. It's going to go, oops, on here. just flush. So that's going to come out. Okay. So let's go ahead and fold over all of our tabs for our waterfall piece. Because this may end up not being a waterfall. We're going to see how this is going to lay out. <laughs> it was late when I was doing this last night. And I may have not measured correctly. So we would have one there. So I'm going to do it this way. Grab a couple of paper clips. 
don't know why there's a nail in my little paper clip thing here, but apparently there's a nail in there. Okay, so I'm gonna fold that over. I'm gonna line up where the next one's gonna sit down. And I'm gonna paper clip. And this one, since we don't want that one little tab to be just kind of sitting there, oops, that would actually fold out. paper clip again. Maybe if I can hang on to them. And again, and it is too long. So what we're going to do instead is we are going to do this one just like we did on our matchbook. We're going to stack these just like so. And then we're going to fold that bottom piece out. So it is going to sit down just a little bit, which is fine. It's what we want. We're going to fold that last tab out. And we're going to put it on top of this tab. Then if I want to, I can take a piece of my green that we matted this with, a scrap of that, and mat that little tab. We want to. We don't have to. And then underneath all of this, because this will all fold up, is where we're going to do our little pocket. And this will just be a very shallow pocket for like a tag or something. Although I am going to line it up so that it is. bottom of my matting, but it's lined up side to side underneath our flaps here. Okay, and then we'll do the sides. Now, I probably should have tucked a ribbon underneath that, and I didn't. So I may have to go ahead and put one on, on top of that, which isn't ideal because as it gets pulled on, you can kind of end up pulling up your pattern paper. Um, that it would be best if you're going to do a ribbon closure for this little section to do it down there before you put that pocket down. But I did miss that, but it will be fine. So there it is. Just needs to be matted, but there is your little tiny snow globe folio. And of course, this is going to go with the little train project when I get that one done, which, oops, didn't mean to do that. I may actually post that first. I guess, depending on when you see this one, you'll know which one came first, if it was the snow globe or the train. Um, but there you go. I'm just going to go ahead and mat this, which you will have seen in the walkthrough. And as always, thank you for watching. If you make this project, by all means, please share this on Country Craft, Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations, as well as on my channel or my page, Scrapping Under the Influence. Um, I'm also on Instagram and Facebook as Scrapping Under the Influence. So as always, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, ring the bell if you want to get notifications when I post new projects. Thank you. Okay, I'm not totally finished. I totally forgot I was going to show you how to run some twine around your raw edges on the um, sides and the top of the album. So on this, around the shaker, I'm actually going to use the wider Doodlebug Chunky Twine. This is one out of my stash. Actually, both of the twines are out of my stash. This is just a red, and, red, green, and white holiday one I've had for, oh my gosh, years, years and years. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on an end. 
and I'm going to just run a very thin bead of glue. Sorry, I'm concentrating so I don't get it everywhere. I'm just going to start on one end and put that down. And you will end up completely, your fingers completely covered in glue by the end of this. But the finished effect is so cool. I absolutely love doing this kind of edge on shaped albums. Okay. You of course don't want to glue, do the glue all the way around because it is a slower process to put this on. So I just do little sections about three or four inches at a time. Pretty much any normal baker's twine will work. I think there is some in the shop at Country Craft Creations. I will link it in the description below. I'm pretty sure I was looking last night for something. I'm pretty sure there was. Um, if not, I know. That's the, that's the hazard is when it sticks to your finger instead of sticking to your book. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm not going to run it across my spine there, so I am going to cut this right here. I'm just going to do another little bit of glue underneath that just to make sure it stays. And then I'm going to start on this side and go back around. And I got way more twine than I needed to, but that's okay. I'd rather have too much than get halfway across and realize I'm going to be short. And I'll just put this in my ribbon jar. Glass, actually. It's a wine glass that's full of extra pieces of ribbon and things. When you do a shaped album with the normal medium weight chipboard as opposed to the lightweight, because the Cricut has to do what it's what is called a multi-cut, where basically the blade will follow the same path around the chipboard three or four times to get it fully cut out, there will always be just a slight difference between your chipboard and your cardstock when you go to mat it. Your cardstock's always going to be just a hair bigger. I mean, we're talking like probably a 64th of an inch, so like just a tiny, tiny difference. But doing this technique on full size chipboard albums or medium weight chipboard albums that are shaped, 
that makes it way easier because you're going to have like a tiny little channel in between your cardstock to mat the front and the back of your shaped chipboard. It makes it really, really easy to do this technique. On the lightweight chipboard, this is a little bit trickier. Okay, we're almost there. Just kind of looking around. So now we can cut this one off. Okay. and just get a little bit extra glue. So now that raw edge is completely covered up. For our shaker, we're gonna do the exact same thing, only I'm gonna use the chunky twine because the chunky twine, and this, like I said, this is a doodle bug chunky twine. Unfortunately, um, she does not have this one in the store. This particular one, she's got a couple of other colors. She doesn't have the red. So this one, I'm gonna be a little bit more generous with the glue, and this one actually will go a lot faster. Um, I'm only doing it, it's not going all the way around the bottom because we have more of a gap down here than I normally would have because my shaker window, of course, didn't go all the way, all the way down. So we are just gonna go up around the edge of our shaker. Okay. But this will sit just right down in there, so this makes it super easy to do this one. And there you go, there's your twine. All I need to do now is just figure out, I'm gonna do some kind of embellishing around this edge. I just haven't quite decided what I'm doing, but it's probably gonna involve a whole lot of gluing a whole bunch of little pieces. Um, and then I'm going to add some probably glossy accents or Nouveau Crystal Glaze on top of my lights here. The rest of this is matted and done. So for the, the matting here, this is one of the border strips from the 8x8 collection. I can get a hold of it here. Nope, not that sheet. That sheet, aha, there it is. Um, that I just cut and then I used the widest, the 10 millimeter spot on my corner rounder to round that for the matting there and on here, because this is just a, a scrap. I did add a photo mat here, and then I've got my ribbon on my little matchbook, and I've got it around my piece here. So what I did here, because I didn't get that tucked under there, I didn't think about the ribbon until after all of this was glued down, which is fine. I've got it glued on the top of this little gusset, which will be fine. Down here where it's underneath the pattern paper, I glued it down and then I just took a little piece of the red cardstock, just a little scrap and put it over the ribbon and then matted it because that's gonna reinforce it so this isn't gonna pull up the pattern paper. So just a little trick that I have learned because I routinely forget to put my ribbon down before I mat and not going to do anything on here because this will stand up so we don't need to mat the bottom of this. All right, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do for the rest of this and that for real this time is it. So thanks for watching.